I've now the great pleasure to introduce our next guest, Nathaniel Melos. Um, Nathaniel Melos is currently resident at the Rijks Academy uh, in Amsterdam. He lives in Amsterdam and London. Uh, the application of language is a central theme in his absurdist scripts, in his psychedelic theatre, in his films, his video performances, his collages and his sculptures. Nathaniel Melos also plays bass guitar in the group Skill 7 Stamina 12 and is co-founder of Junior Aspirin Records. Many of his future projects uh, in 2009 include the Tate Triennial of, uh, of Nicola, as well as the, an exhibition at South London Gallery and the Venice Biennale. A very warm welcome to Nathaniel Melos and his manifesto, the Ill Temper Manifesto for a New Aging Manifesto or the New Old Manifesto. Manifesto, or the new aging manifesto, or the new old manifesto. Thank you, my dear. I have a recurring nightmare that there is a snake in my toilet, a shit eating snake feasting upon my becomingness. In the dream, the snake is after my scallops. I am trying desperately to protect them. In reality, I have tried hard to unpick, to disentangle some meaning from this dream. I can only frame it as a dream of base anxiety class, because in reality, I collect scarabs, dung beetles. I have a number of them in my fridge. Several hundred, in fact, they're breeding, and I am breeding them as my dung is. Increasingly, their recurrence, maturing into maintenance, requires most of my time and energy. If I seem nervous, please regard this as a manifestation of concern as to my dungy's well-being. For their sake, I must keep my observations brief and focus to the point, concise, centered, concentrate, et cetera. Today, and so to the introduction, may I have some tea, young, young? The scarab is a species of dung beetle which was much esteemed in ancient France. Egypt! The hieroglyph of the scarab, the dung beetle, can be transliterated as to come into being, to become, to transform, for, and form a young happening mode of being. Now, ever since I was a young man at the Royal College of Art, I have regarded most artists' output as precisely so much dung different from any other person's, rather unusually celebrated, fetishized, and discussed. Artists like myself are stool cuppers by nature. There is a rather addictive tendency to poke, to prod, to tease out some finer nuance, to excavate a nugget as if it were a precious jewel above a piece of corn. Now, I do not exclude myself from this infantile practice, but I would rather embrace it than deny it. So I have fashioned myself after the dung beetle, a superb and terrifically useful little fellow. The dung beetle is a heavenly creature. Now, young man, you look like an intelligent and able-bodied chap. Tell me, how much money does the young North American dung beetle save the US cattle industry each year by burying above ground livestock feces? Don't know, eh? The correct answer is $380 million. <laughs> I know. The dung beetle, of course, expects no remuneration. Could God himself conceive of a more Christian animal? Dung beetle feasts exclusively. Uh, exclusively. Not solid dung, although the little ones, the larva, do munch by munch undigested plant nutrients from the solid matter. But the mature animals instead fix onto the dung with their mandibles and suck the liquid juice from the dung. The dung juice is teeming with enough microorganisms, nutrients and water to sustain life. 
exclusively. Plus, with Herculean efforts, the donkey rolls dung into dung balls ten times its size. He makes some dung, he reproduces in dung, and it is in, of, with, and from dung. And for that reason, ever since my thrusher broke in 1985, and the bar of South Kensington refused to send a plum around, I have been experimenting with my own above-ground feces burial, using the upper portion of my refrigerator, some newspaper, Tupperware, and an army of these hardy little cellars. And it would appear of late that I have, in my actions, become an inadvertent pioneer of ecological action. Watching the dungies build their houses, siphoning of the gas to power my argor in the winter. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Silent weapons on quiet walls. And so to the introduction. And so to the introduction. Why I am here. Now, to be honest, I am not sure how old I am. When I am from the future, or the past, how appropriate conflation is the problem as I see it. Or, I could say, as I know it. I am confident that I have something of the future about me. I have some of it, but some of the past too. Lots of the past. Today I would like to appear to you as a ghost of Christmas future. Ism here to give you a stern ticking off. Here to give you a stern fucking off. Fuck off, fuck off. I suppose this might be my last act, as it were. Mm. Part one, how to spot a chocolate teapot. To begin then, Part one, how to spot a chocolate teapot. To begin then, part one, how to spot a chocolate teapot. Standing here drinking tea, I am thinking about the oxymoronic potential of this event. Oxymoron, oxymorono. Check back, I can put a few in back there for humorous effect. Now, in the days of the Tamworth Manifesto, or the Humanist Manifesto, the Fascist Manifesto, or indeed the Cannibal Manifesto, Cannibal. it was rightly considered to be a political act to try and say something. Now, the commissioning of a plethora of manifestos is also a political act but it is a political act of a very different nature. I is the circumstance where I will inspect it as it were. <laughs> go round it. Is it not immediately obvious? I should like to put this politely. Is a lack of seriousness in relation to its own subject or theme not a precondition of an event such as this? A consciousness changing marathon attended by a small crowd expecting yeah. unexpected. Serpentine! 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 Serpentine, serpentine, cunning, slippery, and shifting. Adamantine to begin. Sinuous in form and movement. Why on earth would anyone come to such a place? When I go for a walk, I like my roads to stand still. And to stay on the ground! That is my ripened perspective on it. It must sound strange to the unfledged. It must sound strange to the unfledged. To all you bloody embryos. Ah! Stomach! But I see now that there are snake surfers among us. Are there not? And there you are. Yes, you! The bald man. Why are you not reading? Milton. My dear, why are you not studying Milton? Before you step out of the house, read Milton. I can see the lack of it upon you. My name, standing on a snake? Ted Malt was a bloody good bloke. Now, the more astute amongst you, those of you of a visual aspect, will perhaps be aware that I'm not in a particularly good mood. 
There are those that would have it as fact, but I am dying. I should say that I'm not here to be negative. I am here, Lazarus Taxa, to promote undead values. <coughs> I believe I'm younger than the youngest and older than the oldest here. Even you, sir. Yes, you, man with the shopping bags that you resent, but that keep you upright like ballast. I am prone to time travel. My ass, my ass. We can see that in the class has arisen or sat down. This might be a more appropriate intensive. Sat down at the back of the buses and on the underground railways. Dropped down from top to bottom, as in a drawing by James Ensor. There you have your trickle down. Now listen, if anyone uses the term trickle down, then strikes them fiercely about the chest. And as they lie prostate, Shutting themselves and rattling for breath, then place your foot square upon their face and say in a clear tone, Sir, fecal liquids trickle down, money holds its form. Unlike the charming and invisible working class, the underclass are a certainty. They are right there. And yet we would deny them their reality. Deny them any imaginative life. Unctuous, liberal, in he comedy. Use them to un <coughs> unite the masses in spiteful laughter. Like laughing at a handicapped child struggling to eat his sandwiches. <coughs> Into the gutter with you. You will be nothing but caricature, absurd and elastic in your capacity to receive abuse. You will be laughed at from without by the professional jovialist. Little England never was a program more appropriately named. We're shrinking by the day! Last Ruddy Richard Whiteley for upping sticks. 3.25 p.m. is spoiled. Spoiled! But as I was saying, the old working class has vanished. Where did it go? Nowhere. It has gone precisely nowhere. But we cannot see it anymore because it thinks it has gone somewhere else. Making myself clear. The working class has what its ambition moves house. It has swapped its table nest for the high kick and corporeal punished masochism of self-assembling furnishings. The working class has changed rooms. It has changed names, hence it appears to have vanished. Lumpen lower middle class. The lumpen lower middle class is in fact the British working class, and no amount of IKEA furniture will obscure this reality. The lumpen lower middle class is in fact the new British working class. The upper middle class is the only real middle class. And no amount of IKEA furniture will change this fact. I would like to raise a silent alarm. All of which brings me back round to dear George Orwell and cannibalism. It was George, of course, who was quick to note, not cannibalism, which has been going on for years, but the resting of words, the resting of language from its moorings in reality. It's not a game, it's a deadly affair. Where are you? George! George! Are you there? George! Perhaps we can catch him. Do you believe in the spirit, young one? George! Can I hear him? What's that? George! What music would you expect to hear? <laughs> I don't know, George. You sit down. Yes, George! George! This is a youth club. The post ideological disc attack, George. George! I do not find the music terribly groovy, I'm afraid. I know. We must start somewhere. Oh, you mean talk about the disco? That's Terry. Terry here? Is Terry here? Is Terry there? Terry's not dead yet. Don't! It's the first time Terry's not dead yet. Don't! Orwell's tenet, I would go so far as to call it a credo, is that our ability to use words clearly and with precision affects our ability to think. Not because you are stupid, far from it. Although there are always a few thickos, of course. 
meaning of her and degrading language is a prerogative of politicians and scandals. Orwell identified writing on art and political speech writing as synonymous in their commitment to vague, debased, disingenuous and manipulative wordage. Wordage. The word terror is, of course, the biggest example of the word hijacked. The word terror has itself been taken hostage. Etymologically, terror is it's characterized by obscurity or indeterminacy in its treatment of potentially horrible events. Or indeterminacy in relation. Indeterminacy. Indeterminacy. In its treatment of potentially horrible events, this is fundamental to its meaning. The enables the theorization of the sublime, so can never be made concrete. This is why can never be found. You see, if we cannot agree terms, we can have no consensual grasp of reality. We are allowing our grasp of reality to slip into the weave of subjectivity. Press subjectivity. Damn those who make a feature of nature. Blast postmodernism and its endless colors of disempowerment. Blast the empty rhetoric it necessitates and curse the sleuth of hollow reference. Because in reality, all things are still real. Do not allow your sense of reality to be confused or extracted, stolen by some sloppy conjurer. Do you understand me? How can I explain this? Endless colors. Appropriation. Reference. Since when was it the ambition of art to look like art? Since when was it the ambition of art to look like art? We have taken a culture and made it a craft. Aesthetics. Big craft. Design bag. A word bag. Hong Kong is accompanied by a bag of words. A word bag can take the form of a piece of A4 paper or a buffoon in expensive clothes, leaping at the wells and leaking a stream of nonsense. How can you speak if your mouth full of worms?